This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Yo, 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 what's good guys? It's your boy Dixon from Twitter Designs. Today I'll be showing you how to do this heat map blurry exposure effect in Photoshop. I get a lot of requests on how to do this effect and luckily it's not that hard even for beginners. You know, it works with just about any kind of portrait photo, so let's go. Alright, so this is the photo that I'll be working with today. Uh, I got it from Unsplash. It is 1% free. Download link is below, so go get the photo if you want. But yeah, this effect works with any kind of portrait. But it'll be easier if it's got a darker or black background for when you turn it into a shirt design. I'll explain more on that later on. Starting off, just click on this lock icon to unlock the layer. Command J to copy. Then rename them to 1 and 2. For now, we're going to turn off layer 2 and then work with this one first right click and then convert it to smart object now the first effect we're gonna ask is the gaussian blur so go to filter blur and gaussian blur nothing too crazy for now so we're just gonna go with five pixels and then hit ok after the turn layer 2 back on, convert it to smart object. The first effect we're adding to this is motion blur. So go to filter, blur, motion blur. Now the angle depends on the photo that you use. But since I want the movement to be kind of perpendicular to the eyes of the model, I'm just going to go with 30 degree. For the distance, we're going with 500 pixels. But you can test it out first and see which other settings you like. Um, you know, and then just hit OK. Since we're trying to mimic the long exposure photography look, the second effect we're adding is wave. Now, as you can see, the straight blur lines look too artificial. They are too perfect. So we're going to fix that. Once again, go to filter, distort, but this I'm going to select wave. In a pop-up window, you can just copy the settings here. You just got to make sure that the type is sign and then the generators are three. Wavelength is one for minimum and then 400 for maximum. Amplitude is one for minimum and then 15 for maximum. Scale is both 100% for horizontal and vertical. The last one is just check the repeat edge pixel for the undefined areas and then OK. You can now see the wavy effect added to the photo. Let me just turn it on and off so you guys can see the difference and just how much realistic it looks now compared to before. Lastly, we're going to sum up the effects with the Gaussian Blur. So just head over there. And then for the pixel, we're going to go with something just a bit different. I'm going to set it to 8 pixels and then just hit OK. Moving on, we're going to add 3 adjustment layers by starting out with black and white. So just click on this adjustment button here and then select black and white. Just hit on this auto button here and then let it does its thing and something like this should happen. After that, the second adjustment layer is curves. Now in this graph right here, just click at the bottom of it like this and then click another one up top to kind of create this S shape. Um, in the graph now what this does is it's gonna increase the contrast of the photo so it doesn't look too faded like before I'm just gonna drag this one way higher to kind of increase the highlight even more now I'm pretty happy with this so let's move on now the last adjustment layer we're adding is the gradient map now this is the crucial step that shifts everything and get that heat map look it all comes down to tricky color combinations but luckily for you I have created this this gradient map presets that you can download for free and use it in this tutorial just click the link in the description and then you can use it right away now guys make sure you thumbs up this video it helps me get on a good side of youtube algorithm you know so that i can keep giving away these free stuff and making these tutorials for you guys once installed you can now select either one of these presets and then just drag the cursors around and see which settings work best with your photo one thing for certain though is that you want to drag this black one right here a bit to the right to get that stronger black background. But yeah, have fun experimenting it. Once you're happy with the result, just hit OK. So after some adjustments, this is the result that I got. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's move on to part two where I show you guys how to turn this into a shirt design. 
so guys the hard part is now over let me show you guys how to get rid of the black background so that it's transparent and ready for dtg shirt printing but before that a quick word from today's sponsor envato elements Envato Elements is hands down the best investment I've made since I've started using it a year ago. With over 50 million assets available at your disposal, you can easily browse through their vast resource library for premium assets. Whether it's fonts for your posters, stock photos for your shirt designs, or logo animation for your YouTube videos, Envato Elements has got you covered. My personal favorite feature is the 3D assets library. So just go to the search bar, select 3D, type in what you need, and you get endless collection of 3D assets. Envato Elements 3D models allow you to rotate and select the angle to best suit your design and you can download it as PNG file. Another good thing about this is that they offer unlimited downloads where you can download all the assets you want with only one subscription. Click the link below to get 50% off on annual subscription giving you full access for just $16.50 per month. Now back to the video. Right, so the typical print size for t-shirt is A3. This is the exact resolution, so copy it and make sure it's in millimeters and at least 300 for the DPI and the background black. Next, you go back to the working file and group all the layers together by clicking on the first adjustment layer and then shift click on the bottom layer to select them all and then just command G. Now let's rename this to FX, short for effects, and then option command E to merge the layers into one now i'm gonna command a to select the canvas and then command c to copy and i'm gonna bring this to the a3 file and i'm gonna command v to paste now let's recenter the layer by command a to select the canvas and then just go to this transform control panel here and just click on these two to recenter now command d to deselect as you can see the layer is too big for the canvas so we're just gonna size it down by hitting option t and then i'm just gonna drag it down like so Okay, now we can start getting rid of the black background, but quick explanation, DTG printers cannot print black on black shirt. So the best way to do it is to separate the colors from the black background and just leave it with transparent background. There's only one step to do this and it's very easy. First, you just gotta make sure that the marquee tool is selected and then go to select color range and in the drop down menu select shadow and set the fuzziness to 20% and also 20 to the range after that something like this should happen and then right click on it and then select inverse next just add a mass layer by clicking on this button here and here it is you can see that the colors are separated now without the black color although the issue that we have now is these blurry sections dtg printers can only print elements with 100 percent transparency meaning there is no transparency so to fix that is really easy just set the blending mode to dissolve and there you go the blurry sections turn to solid pixels without losing the faded look it kind of has that noisy grainy vibe which actually looks better in my opinion this is it guys, you can now turn this into a full on shirt design by adding some text to it. I'm just gonna type in something random like sus socks, short for um, suspicious society. And then yeah, I'm gonna add a smaller subtext below, brush out this part right here and we're done. That's it for today guys, hope you learned something useful today. Subscribe if you're new, I upload every Saturday so don't miss out. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more content. See you on the next one.